a mysterious world, a somewhat unknown lifestyle, creatures that no longer exist, people who lived hundreds of years, giants that are said to have roamed the earth, and an era that sparks the curiosity of many. Of course, we're talking about the pre-Diluvian era. The Bible records the antediluvian period in the first chapters of the book of Genesis. According to the biblical text, in the pre-Diluvian era, human civilization achieved great accomplishments, but also perpetuated a culture of sin. But what was life like for people at that time? What did they do? What happened in the world before the Great Flood? This is exactly what we will be discussing from now on in this video. Obviously, the first antediluvian family was the family of Adam. After being expelled from the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve settled and had sons and daughters. As we know, the first son of the first couple was Cain. But Cain was also the first murderer of the antediluvian world. He brutally killed Abel, his own brother. After his terrible sin, Cain received a mark from God and built a city in the land of Nod. Cain named this city after his first son, Enoch. This antediluvian city is the first city mentioned in the Bible. Contrary to what extra-biblical theories claim, the scripture clearly explains that man was created by God as a rational and morally capable being. This means that while man experiences a kind of intellectual evolution as he acquires knowledge and develops new technologies, there was no evolutionary process as a species as argued by some scientific theses. This becomes very clear when we look at the biblical accounts of the antediluvian period. As mentioned, Cain, the first human being to be born on earth, was developed enough to build a city. His descendants in turn were responsible for great inventions. With Jabal, Jubal, and Tubal Cain, antediluvian society learned to live in tents, to breed herds of cattle, to develop the arts with the use of musical instruments, and to forge tools through working with copper and iron. Later in Noah's time, the Bible shows how he already had the capacity and the necessary resources to build a large ark according to divine instructions. Therefore, although the Bible does not provide many details about this period, it is clear that there was a strong technological and cultural development in the antediluvian world. Many people wonder about the duration of the pre-flood era, but the Bible remains silent on this issue. However, numerous scholars suggest that the time span from the world's creation to the flood might have been longer than the remainder of biblical history. Attempts have been made to date this period, but all have proven inconclusive. In fact, the only source providing any chronological information about the pre-flood era is the genealogical list in Genesis chapter 5. However, it's unlikely that one could establish exact dates from this record, simply because that's not its intended purpose. Biblical genealogies are more concerned with establishing lineages than with defining chronological data. Some of these genealogical lists may even be representative, rather than exhaustive. This means that there could be intentional gaps in these lists to emphasis individuals who held particular significance in biblical history. For instance, in representative lists, when it's stated that one person begat another, it implies that the former is merely an ancestor of the latter, not necessarily their direct parent. This has been corroborated in other biblical genealogies, and many scholars believe it's plausible that the same is true for the genealogy in Genesis chapter 5. Based on this genealogical data in Genesis chapter 5, scholars can at least observe that the significant advancements in the pre-flood world were likely related to human longevity. During that era, there was only one language, and God allowed people to live for centuries. This likely played a pivotal role in the technological progress and the transmission of information during that period. Yes, there are alternative interpretations regarding the longevity of the people who lived prior to the flood, but the most traditional view within Christianity is one that takes a straightforward reading of the biblical text, affirming that these individuals lived for hundreds of years. The Bible says that the sinful lifestyle adopted by Cain quickly spread throughout the antediluvian world. For example, Lamech, a descendant of Cain, was the first to adopt polygamy in the biblical pages, 
and he was also a double murderer who took pride in his cruelty. Cain himself, after killing Abel, not only did not repent, but also felt that God's punishment on him was unjust. The Bible also says that in the antediluvian period, the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. It is true that some interpreters argue that this meant a mixture between spiritual beings and humans. In other words, supposedly fallen angels had relationships with women on earth. But most scholars agree that the interpretation that best fits the biblical text is that this mixture was human degeneration promoted by relationships between godly and ungodly people, so that rapidly ungodliness prevailed and characterized the entire civilization. This means that at that time the godly lineage of Seth was the branch of humanity that preserved the knowledge of God. But over time this lineage mixed with the ungodly lineage of Cain, and spiritual depravity reached an intolerable limit. At that time, there were Nephilim on earth. Some scholars argue that the Nephilim were giants born from the mixture of the sons of God and the daughters of men. But many other Old Testament scholars believe that it is more likely that the Nephilim were mighty men and of great renown in antiquity, and that they exerted dominance through acts of tyranny, further escalating humanity's measure of sin. However, in the antediluvian period, there were also people who were truly committed to the Lord. Abel, for example, was the first martyr who continued to be remembered as an example of faith even in New Testament times. Enoch was another who had such a close relationship with God that he was taken to not see death. Lastly, it was in that period that Noah was also born, grew up, and developed as a man. But in the final years of the antediluvian period, Noah was the rare exception of a person who continued to fear the Lord. The Bible says his family was the only one spared when God's patience found the general depravity of that civilization intolerable. And so the antediluvian period ended with the outpouring of God's wrath and the destruction of the earth. The situation was so complicated, wickedness was at such a high level that the biblical writer records God's discontent with humanity through the figure of repentance, saying that God had regretted creating man. In the New Testament, the Apostle Peter, in his second epistle at chapter 3 and verse 6, records the end of the antediluvian story by stating the following. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. But everything that happened at that time serves as a warning to us. This is because the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that in the last days of the present era, the pre-diluvian lifestyle will be repeated. Everyone will live according to their own will, their own desires, feasting, celebrating, relating. But everyone will be too busy for God's call to repentance. Then, just like what happened with the antediluvian generation, people will only come to their senses when God's judgment is poured out without the opportunity for anyone to turn back. Indeed, Jesus illustrated this moment by saying that just as in the pre-Diluvian world, the ungodly were taken away by the waters of the flood, in the final days, the unrepentant will also be taken from this world by God's judgment. This, therefore, is an urgent call to humanity. The Bible does not paint a picture of the antediluvian world to satisfy our curiosity about ancient times, but as a stark reminder that a lifestyle characterized by ignoring God's standards and indulging in sin will inevitably lead to divine judgment. The parallels between the antediluvian world and our present age should serve as a warning to us. This is the time to turn our attention to God, to repent of our sins, and to seek His grace and forgiveness. In conclusion, the pre-diluvian world was a unique period in human history. It was marked by significant technological and cultural development, but it was also characterized by great sinfulness and rebellion against God. In the end, it served as a strong warning for future generations. Its sudden end in a catastrophic flood illustrates the seriousness of divine judgment and the urgency of human repentance. Therefore, it is crucial that we stay alert and prepared, living our lives in obedience to God and looking forward to the return of Christ.